Hi, gang. <laughs> oh, you hey. Hi, Liz. Hi. Hi. <laughs> We're on. Hello. Yes, yeah, live and in person <laughs> right now. Can you believe it? Yeah, it's about 3 o'clock, close to it. So, our top story today is four tips to maximize the sale of your home. Yes, what's number one? <laughs> number, <laughs> well, number one is you got to make buyers feel at home. That's right. You want to make your home as inviting as you possibly can. Uh, so number one, declutter. You want to take out all your personal belongings and declutter it. You want to make a buyer feel at home the minute they walk in. So you want to make room in the house. That means on the countertops, in the room, the furniture, the closets, so that a buyer can really imagine themselves living there. Uh, you know, 82% in the most recent National Association of Realtors study says that um, it's the most important thing that a home show well, be decluttered, and be let, so the buyer can visualize themselves living there. And a staged home sells for six to ten percent more money than one that isn't. So those are National Association of Realtors statistics. Yes, and Lisa is an accredited stager, so she knows that to declutter and depersonalize absolutely works every time so the buyers can see themselves living there. Is that correct? That's right. Okay, it's an accredited stager. I, I knew you would know the answer to that one. Yes. So I'm happy to come and talk to you, walk through your house, no problem. Let's talk about how to get the most money for your house, and that is number one. Is staging or decluttering. That's right. Or, or I think number one would be talking to Lisa. Okay. <laughs> yes, that'll work. Number two, keep it clean. So when somebody comes in, they don't need to see the dishes in the sink. They don't need to see beds unmade. They don't need to see the, you know, the shower just in total disarray like it is around here occasionally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it needs to be, uh, let's say spotless if you can, or just as clean as you can make it. Even a property that's dated, uh, it always shows better clean. Everything shows better clean. If you have a property you've inherited, it might have been grandma's house and it hasn't been updated in 50 years. You know what? That's okay. Lots of people love a charming original condition home, but to show it, it needs to be clean because everything shows better clean. <laughs> yeah, and then, you know, it's amazing how far a little elbow grease will go. I mean, you get in there and you scrape on the grout, you know, get, you know, with the brush and the cleaner and you come out. Clean is better than dirty. That's right. And it just shows it's amazing. Even just washing the windows. We always recommend you wash the windows right before we shoot photography because it just lets more light in. Yes, right before we shoot photography and definitely before we shoot photography and after the rain. So you got to time that just right. <laughs> <laughs> because rain is such a big problem around here. <laughs> <laughs> it can be, you know. It seems like it's timing is always impeccable, right? Wash your car, it's going to rain. Yeah, yes. and you know, it's just a great time to sell your house right now, though. Inventory is so low and the buyers are competing. It's a great time to be a seller because it's not necessarily just about the highest price It's also about terms. The seller is in the driver's seat right now on terms, too So if you're worried about selling your home because you're wondering where you're gonna go What are you gonna buy now is a great time because we can negotiate things like maybe your rent back and you can stay in the property that you're in uh, for an X amount of time until you can find a new home that is one strategy of selling your home now and looking for a new one. There's always strategies, right? That's right. Yes, we come up with new strategies almost every single day. Number three, you gotta give buyers access. Yes, you gotta, it's gotta be easy to show. You know, in this market, there's a lot of pent up buyers in our market. And as soon as you put your home on the market, uh, the buyers wanna get in. They wanna see it, they wanna touch it, they wanna feel it, and they wanna write an offer. They really do, and they're put off almost like something weird's going on if they can't get in to see it. And, you know, it's usually not weird. There's usually circumstances that people can't get in to see it. So if you take the circumstances and you add it to a real anxious buyer, they just think that something weird's going on. Like, oh, oh my gosh, what's wrong with this house? Or why, why can't I see this house? How come everybody else can show this house but me? Yeah, and the, if you want to look at a home virtually, we are happy to do that too. We can do it on FaceTime, we can do it on Zoom, uh, whatever is more convenient for you, we are happy to do virtual showings too, whether it is our li listing you wanna see 
or you want to look at homes as a buyer or you're out of the area, we're happy to do all that virtually too. Yes, now do you prefer Zoom or FaceTime? Do you have a preference? Whatever the client wants. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it seems like, you know, we're on our phones, we're on Zoom or we're on FaceTime. We use both of them and I really can't tell the difference. Can you? Yeah, no, I mean, they, they have, I think everyone has gotten to be an expert in Zoom in the last year and whatever works for the client works for us. Yes, it does. We're very flexible when it comes to showings like that, the virtual showings, right? So the virtual open houses, the virtual showings, the virtual walkthroughs, everything's virtual, you know, 3D virtual. Yep. Can be. Number four, very important. You still have to price it right, don't you think? That's right. Price is always the most important thing, I think, for both sides, the seller and the buyer. But of course, they have different objectives on both sides of that coin. <laughs> Yes, they do. But you definitely want to price it right in this market, even though things are going up so fast and, you know, we're hearing crazy stories, multiple offers, overbids. Um, it's still important to price your house right and accordingly and let the market bid it up because not only do you get the highest price that way, just basic economics, supply and demand, uh, but you also get a really committed buyer. If they feel like they have come in with a really strong offer, they have overbid, they have given you everything they have to write an offer on your home, we have a committed buyer because we definitely want someone who wants it, who is going to stay in escrow because opening escrow and closing escrow, there's a lot in between. <laughs> yes, there is. A lot of heartache and happiness. Yes. You, get, you get both sides of that coin. You get mountaintops and valleys during the escrow process. Yes, and we will do our very best to smooth those out along the way. <laughs> the mountaintops and the valleys. <laughs> smooth road, right? High lows and low highs. That's right. So it's not unheard of, let's say you're selling the house that, you know, the last one closed for a million two, and you're thinking, oh my gosh, let's push it up a little bit, let's go a million three, and then that kind of puts off some buyers. Let's say if you price it a million two, just like the last, closed comparable sell, you definitely, it's market value, right? Because that's where your last closed comparable is. However, if the market's higher than that, the market's going to push it up. You can't fool the market. That's right. <laughs> and then if you come in too high, let's say you start off at a million three, million four, people aren't going to show up. They're going to say, that's just too high price. It's out of my price range. It's just out of the market range. However, it's like going to an auction. You know, you go to an auction and you start raising your hand and you start bidding on something and you see three or four other people bidding on it and you go, oh my gosh, you know, I want it worse than they do. So you start bidding it up. That's kind of how the emotional overbid process works. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that that's number four. We threw number four. We got the top four in there. Yep, we did. So you're thinking about selling a home, you want to work with someone who is experienced. And that is us. I'm a third generation realtor. I've been doing this all my life. So you always want to work with someone who has a lot of experience and does a lot of transactions. That's right. So that means your grandmother, your mom and your dad. Yep. And now you third generation. Yep. So Rex is in line to be fourth generation. What do you think? That's think right. You think he's on line for that? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to ask him. He's 17. He has his own opinions about everything. Uh-huh. But yeah, by using us, let's take for an example, you know, you get a doctor that doesn't do very many surgeries, maybe does one or two a year, versus a doctor that does two surgeries every single day. Where do you want to be? You know, for my money, I want to go to the guy that does it every single day because he's seen things that nobody else has seen. If you're doing it once a year, you might have seen it last year or the year before or two years ago, but the doctor that's doing it every day sees it all the time and goes, oh, when this happens, I do this. When that happens, I do this. Not that real estate is any way associated with medicine. However, it is the practice of doing the same thing over and over again that you do get better at. Well, and the market changes every day, just like a doctor, they have new tools, um, new techniques come out, and that happens with us too. So we are in the business and doing this every day. We look at homes and prices every day, and this is what we do. So if you want to talk to someone experienced, if you're thinking about selling a property in this market, 
We would love to talk to you. That's right. You want to go over some real quick stats? We can go over have some stats. Just pull the most recent actives in this, a couple of cities around us. So Statistics. totally uh, uh, all the properties available that are active right now in Ventura would be 82. In Oxnard, 63. This includes single family homes and uh, condos and townhomes. Camarillo, 63. Uh, Ojai, 34. And Westlake, 57. So just to give you an idea, in Ventura, um, there's currently 82 properties for sale. A more uh, normal kind of range for us would be around 140 to 150. So it's almost half what it usually is on uh, properties available. Well, yeah, and I would think is if we went to a totally neutral market, not a buyer's market or not a seller's market, I think we'd be close to 200. So we're down from 200 to 82. Well, what so, they call a normal market would be six months of inventory. Yes. I don't know when that's ever happened or who has a normal market with six months of inventory. <laughs> I don't think we've ever had that. No, we haven't. Um, but right now we're down to the National Association of Realtors statistics are 18 days it takes to sell your house. 18 days. Well, I've got 18 days. Well, yeah, let's go. Who's next? <laughs> What's the barber saying? Next? Next. <laughs> Visit us at GaryandLisa.com, and you can find us, uh, all our information there, and we'd love to talk to you about selling, buying, investing in real estate. That's right. GaryandLisa.com. Your real estate edge. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs>